Hey, Carsten. Yeah, now it's on-prem work, so I'm I'm <laughs> the one again, right? <laughs> so we will we will we are now at point nine in our um, list, and we will deploy uh, VDI VM mm -hmm. on the Azure Stack HCI cluster uh, with our this prepped image. So correct. Maybe is a bit longer video because I'm so slow. So let's <laughs> drive just into it. <laughs> So, okay, so maybe maybe I should do the talking and you are the doing. Okay. Uh, at least you know sometimes that helps me at least. Um, yes. Yeah, so Carsten, you know, we, remember we created the sysprep file or the uh, the golden image, if you will, with the Notepad plus plus applications. And now we now it's the time to prove that this one is really working. So Carsten will create a first virtual machine, um, put it into the domain, move it to the right organizational unit and um, then boot it up and we'll see if that works so important is that this which machine has internet connectivity so we need to reach the internet for uh, some reasons which is you know we we will have inbound connections sort of so there will be users uh, that need to you know come via the uh, via the internet However, from a virtual machine's perspective, it will look like an outbound connection, um, but at least we need to have the path to the internet, right? Um, and um, yeah, so that's one thing. So remember for name resolution as well, later on these uh, VMs will tell the Microsoft AVD um, control plane that they are there, that they can take users. So that means you need to have successful internet name resolution for these guys as well, right? So they need to resolve Microsoft addresses so that they can reach the AVD control plane, tell your host pool that they are accessible. Yeah, and that's basically it. So let's see what Carsten is doing. So he's creating some folders and a virtual machine. It was a- Yes, I, I wanted to, to let you finish, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I did a, a quick um, creation of a virtual machine, a generation mm -hmm. two VM, uh, not too fancy, eight gigabyte of uh, memory. And uh, I added four virtual processors. We can even take eight mm -hmm. or so. It's a multi-user machine. I uh, connected it to a virtual switch, Hyper-V right. switch, and uh, mm -hmm. did some VLAN tagging here. Uh, the automatic stop action I uh, I uh, changed to shutdown. We mm -hmm. we explained that in an earlier video, and I didn't create uh, the operating system disk because we have already, as you as you mentioned, our sys prepped disk. Mm -hmm. We uh, we did in a two former videos where we downloaded it from Azure and uh, sys prepped it. So mm -hmm. now I created just a machine uh, without a disk and. Uh, Mm -hmm. The disk part I'm doing now. So I let um, let the, um, the Hyper-V manager create the directory for us. Um, mm -hmm. Our machine is called AVD V11 MS for multi-session one. And we will create at least one more offline mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that we have the possibility to use different machines to log in. Okay. So then I went into the directory. And because I didn't create a, a virtual disk, there was no virtual hard disk directory. And I, mm -hmm. I like to have my, my um, directories in order. So I created it manually. And mm -hmm. I will now copy our sysprep disk over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I didn't copy it. I moved it. That's bad. <laughs> so I should copy it, right? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we didn't have a sysprep image anymore. Mm -hmm. And it starts very fast and then it drops down to zero. That's another story, but uh, eventually it will copy the disk over. It's it's doing it in, in waves, you, you mm -hmm. see here, right? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's so nice, waves. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it will, uh, it will finish the copy eventually. And then I have, of course, to add the disk to our machine. So I go again mm -hmm. to the settings. Mm -hmm. Now under SCSI controller, we have no uh, hard drive because we skipped it. So I have to add a hard drive here. Mm -hmm. And then I can choose with Bros, I can choose 
identifier. So I, will, I see here uh, of the hypervisor, the remote directory, because Azure Stack HCI doesn't have a GUI, so we can't run Hyper-V Manager on Azure Stack HCI, so I have to do it remotely. And here's my directory. And here's my virtual hard disk directory, and here's our sysprep disk. We could yeah. rename it if you want to, because in the moment we could rename it to the machine name. Maybe we do that. Yeah, yeah you can uh, do a right. You should be able to do a right click on this one. Yeah, let's see if that's possible. No, it's no. only select. Uh, like. no, so I too. have still this one open. So I change mm -hmm. it here, F2, and it should be AVD. Then we have. 11 ms1 right and you can also do uh, drive c or how you like so it should okay. be possible yes it is so here we have to cancel this and do it again browse here yeah this wizard does disk. not is is not very dynamic yeah i yeah. experienced that as it's well. it's okay. a bit old it's deprecated uh, yeah. so it's okay so now we have added our disk and we have to change our boot order. Um, mm. No, it's already here, but let's let network. It, let, yeah, that was, okay. We moved it up. It should work, but uh, you never know. So now we can start our machine. Hmm. We go out of this directory. We don't need this one anymore. And we can now uh, connect to the console mm -hmm. and we start it. So I hope it starts. I think so. And uh, I have the password somewhere because we have only our local administrator. Yes, I, I think I remember the password. And well, when it's, we a log in, it's a sysprep thing, right? So you should be ah, asked yeah. for a new, new password. Then, uh, anyways. You're so right. You're so right. <laughs> it's sysprep, correct. So it will ask is us there, again, maybe is there, for some language. Yes, there is a reason. F um, is there a specific reason why you choose Hyper-V Manager instead of Failover Cluster Manager for creating that virtual machine? Anything? No. Is it just uh, how you how, how you call that uh, when you are used to use Hyper-V Manager? Yeah. If you would import it a machine, a template, Hyper-V Manager would be the right one because Failover mm -hmm. Cluster Manager can't do that. But mm -hmm. for creating, you could create it with uh, Failover Cluster Manager, and it would have the advantage that the VM would be already in the cluster. So in the right. moment it's not in the cluster, we have to do that in a separate step. You're completely right. I could do it with failover cluster manager. Yeah, yeah there are multiple ways of doing it, right? Um, however, you know, like-, like I'm an old the, guy, I'm used yeah. to have to be manager. You know that, right? So. Same, same, same here. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes but, you have um, your preferences and yeah. it's- uh, But you are right, failover cluster manager, even Windows Admin Center would be maybe the better tool to do it. Mm -hmm. Or the more, Windows Admin Center would be the more modern tool. Okay. So we accept the license terms, and now I have to give a password here. It's a local administrator password. Mm -hmm. I hope I did it right. So, okay. and here we are. Um, we can use uh, uh, enhanced session mode. Maybe we have to copy something into the machine, so that would be easier, but we also have internet access, I guess. So I will use that. I think not in this session, uh, but there will be a later a later video where we need to have copy paste, or where copy paste is very uh, useful. And... So I remembered right. the password I just set, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love yeah it. You never know. <laughs> and here you see okay. we installed in our preparation video, we also installed Notepad as an mm -hmm. additional application. Our image also has mm -hmm. Office installed, and you see here Teams is there. Teams, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. nice. Um, Good. So now we have network already. Um, okay. So now we will add this machine to our Active Directory because. Okay. Group policies will only um, work, right. and the users that we synchronize to Azure will only work if we do. And that. it's also a requirement by AVD, right? So uh, until, or at least at so, this time when we took the video, right? So now we have to find the add to. Um, it's something with the about stuff. I remember, but where is yeah. it? It's if system. you go to uh, right click on the on the uh, Windows logo, or I think you have it already. Yeah, have there it, it is. Here, right? Uh, in something... the middle, I think. In the middle, there's workspace. Yeah, there it is. There that's it is. the that's the most um, 
what we do is this is the part that is the most difficult to find the place to add the machine to the domain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not he's, joking. No, it's, 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 hardly it's a joke, but he's it's really joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so we will also change the computer name, of course. It was AVD we W11 MS1, and I will try to also to add it to our local Active Directory. And uh, this is not the right way to uh, name a domain, but it's an old one, and it will be die very soon so um let's do that and he asked me for a user and and let's try to do that yeah so name that, resolution that works like works. a charm hey, cool so we have to have to restart the machine i will do that mm -hmm. And in the next video, I would say yeah. we will prepare. If you it. would have your domain controller ready, right? You could move the VM to the right organizational unit if you want to. I do. I have uh, I have my domain controller ready, so it should be in the computers group. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's do a reload here. And where is it? AVD window. W11 MS1, and we move it to AVD hosts. Perfect. So now oh, if we yeah. look at AVD host, we have it in the right uh, organizational unit. OK, so I think we are done here. And uh, yep. in the next video, we will uh, do something more with our virtual machine. All right. There. We will join them to the host pool. See you there.